Hello all, welcome to this channel where we discuss templates, tools, and systems to help you better run your business in Notion. And today we'll be covering another common indie business model that is the podcaster. It seems everyone and their mum has a podcast these days, so I thought it would be useful to build out a bit of a hub that models and mimics what it is that goes on in a podcasting business. So whether you're a podcaster yourself, whether you're thinking of starting one, or if you're just curious to get some inspiration for your own Notion workspaces, I hope you find this video useful. Let's get into it. So my goal is to get through this tour in under 15 minutes, which means I'll kind of be rapid fire jumping through the workspaces. And then if you have any specific questions about a section or a page or a database or anything in this system, please do leave a comment and I'm more than happy to to answer it. So Podcaster OS is just um, my attempt to kind of capture the key elements of what would go into running a podcasting business. Most of the pages that you find in the system are in this left-hand menu. And there are a few more, um, which you'll find on some pages, like on the strategy page, there are some extra tabs up the top, which we can click through. So the way that it is organized is we have kind of our home dashboard, we have our menu on the side, and we have a map which hosts all of our databases. So just for you to know how this system kind of works, um, you'll find all the all of the databases that make up this system in the map, and you'll find most of the key pages and dashboards that you need in this left-hand menu. So from the home, you'll see there's kind of a, a summary of some of the main things going on. So we'll see any upcoming meetings and interviews. We'll see a priority board of any tasks that are coming up, and we'll see a quick view of our sponsors and guests pipeline. So this is a view of our contacts database and anyone who's tagged as a guest will show up in this subgroup. Anyone who's tagged as a potential sponsor will be in this group. We'll go into each of those um, in other pages. So we have a, a section to kind of list and track any high level objectives. Any business is gonna have this. We're gonna have goals, we're gonna have targets that we're working towards. We have a strategy section which is similar to other models. If you guys have seen um, Cloudy OS or some of, or Niche Site OS, any of these other um, indie business model systems in Notion that Landmark Labs has offered, this will look familiar to you, but we have a kind of swap board summary. We have a lean canvas if you prefer that methodology. And then we just have a general notebook. We have a personas section. So this is where we can list any key audience personas or any key guest personas or any key sponsor personas. This is just kind of generally useful again for most businesses. So this strategy section is quite generic in terms of most businesses will have personas that they're talking to. They'll have competitors that are in their specific market or industry. We can list those here. They might have a positioning strategy. So for your podcast, um, you might be trying to capture a very specific part of the market. Um, maybe that is within an industry, let's say graphic design for a very specific type of person, maybe for freelance freelancers. So freelance graphic design podcast, and then whatever your unique angle is, maybe that's interviewing other freelancers or interviewing experts in graphic design. I'm not sure, um, but you can kind of flesh out a bit of your positioning and your key positioning factors here. Monetization, this is a table or which kind of helps you just get a full view of what are some potential um, earning and revenue streams or models that we could use. And then you can kind of think through and select the ones that make the most sense for your podcast if you're already doing it, so you might already be running some advertising, you might have donations, you might have affiliate commission, um, then you can obviously just select those, but this is more for the planning stage. So if you're not yet sure, you can read through um, and select from this table if it is helpful. And then you can also use this forecasting calculator, which is just a simple model to help you kind of 
calculate what um, sponsorships and ad revenue might look like. So you can start whatever your starting listens are. You can also give a growth rate for how you expect your podcast to grow, how many ads you'll run per episode, episodes per month. And then there's an ad rate, which is just going to be a dollar value per thousand listens. So it's by default, this calculator is set up to have kind of the industry benchmark CPM um, revenue. So it's like $25 per thousand listens. But obviously, if you have real data, you can update this and you can just kind of play around with, okay, how many listens per month do I expect? What are my earnings, expected earnings as I move through and grow the podcast? This can just be kind of a, a useful forecasting tool to get started. So that's our strategy section. Now it gets a little bit more specific to our podcast model and podcasting businesses, how they kind of earn. And that's sponsors are a major part of many podcasting businesses. So we have a kind of home dashboard again to summarize some key areas. So any key actions that are related to the sponsorship or sponsors tag will show up here. We have any active sponsor or we have a list of active sponsors here. I need to update this and we should have a bit of a pipeline. So we can go into the pipeline section to get a more detailed view. This is going to be organized from left to right by the status. So if you, let's say you had um, a new, you came across a new potential sponsor for the podcast, you wanted to reach out to them, um, you found their contact details and this subgroup, the nine to 10, eight to nine, this is a good fit rating. So it's basically like, you know, the people, your dream sponsors, the ones that you think are a perfect match for the podcast would be in this nine to 10 field. And then you kind of go down the list um, and you can kind of slot in various contacts and sponsors into that or by the, by that rating. So let's say you came across uh, a decent new potential sponsor. You probably add them to this not contacted uh, space. So let's say it's Adam Adamson, very creative name. If you have an email, there's obviously some properties. This is linked to the contacts database. So there's, there are a few uh, properties you can fill out. You can give it a good fit rating. Let's say it's an eight. Um, you can select the type. So these are automatically going to be sponsors since we're in the sponsors um, section of the workspace. If they have a website, you can link it here. Any feedback they might have given, and we will we have a list of linked databases, um, which we probably don't need to fill out or mess around with now. We also have a section for our sponsorship packages. So, if you have any specific rates, you can list them here, and you can add more details into this database object. Um, and you can obviously mix and match various offerings and you can tag um, the type of package offering that it is. We also have a section for any scripts. Maybe uh, one of your sponsors has sent you an ad read and you want to just keep track of it here. You can also link it to the project that it belongs to here. And finally, we have a section for proposals. So if you are writing any specific proposals, uh, seeking out sponsorship, you can list and track those here. We have another section for any affiliate programs that you may have applied for. So you can list the status here, you can list the commission rate and link out to the program details. Another section we have for podcast ad networks. So this is pre-filled with some common podcast ad networks like Midroll, Podgrid, um, so you can use those as a starting point, but you can obviously add your own if you are going to take that monetization route for your podcast. Similarly, we can um, look at the hosting and directories lists. So these are just going to be places where we can plan out and look at or kind of compare different options for podcast hosting providers. So perhaps you end up going with Buzzsprout, you can select it from the list. Um, and there are some tags here, which may be updated over time. Uh, and similarly for directories in terms of where you might want to distribute and publish your podcast. So that's kind of the podcast specific side of it. You may also have a website 
um, which has kind of a broader overview of not only the podcast, but what you're doing as a creator. Uh, maybe there are other links or contact forms. So if you do have a website, there's a bit of a uh, website planner section here as well to help you stay on top of that. And finally, just a general kind of research or any research that you're doing um, that's related to your podcasting business. You can link that and list that here. Then we'll move into this kind of more actions oriented section of the system. And uh, we have a calendar overview. This is everything that's going on with a uh, in our meetings database. So whether that's a meeting with a new potential sponsor, whether it's an interview, you're actually running or recording the session, or maybe it's just a, an intro call to kind of get to know your guests, you will see those showing up on the calendar. We also have a section to list projects. So the kind of distinction that I make between projects and actions is just that a project is typically a longer spanning um, initiative with some outcomes that actually matter to the business. So, you know, typically they are made up of several actions. So we might have a a larger campaign on Twitter, which lasts for a month. And obviously there will be several actions or discrete tweets that need to be made to fulfill that project. We also have kind of a, a bit of a prioritizer for this project. So as you are listing various projects and campaigns that you'd like to work on in the business, you can prioritize and sort those with this prioritizer tab. You'll see that these uh, have a percentage progress bar now it's using Notion's uh, latest release for the native progress bars, which is awesome. Um, and as with any other uh, models that you might have seen from Landmark Labs, this is going to be pulling from the actions that belong to a project. So if this action belongs to this project medium growth, then if I archive it, which is basically saying this is done, then we will see that the uh, medium growth is fulfilled. That was these two tasks that are linked to this project, both done. And so it has 100% on track and we would see that in the timeline. So now we've moved over to the actions board. We have a priority board and then we have a tasks by projects board as well. So these are just two different ways of kind of viewing what, uh, what needs to be done. Obviously, um, with this subgrouping of priority, highest priority tasks are at the top, lowest priority at the bottom, and then we have kind of the status of our tasks moving from left to right. We also have a workflows database. So if you have any specific workflows that you run through for each episode creation or maybe for guest research or the intro call prep, you can list those here and reference them as you need them. And then we have a section dedicated to our content, to our episodes and their creation. So each episode will um, have a few kind of key properties. So we can give it a due date. So we might schedule this for the end of August. It has a status. It has a type. And if we wanted to go into keywords and use case and user journey, we can also link those here. It also has a topic. So this episode's board by default will be uh, showing the status of a piece of content. This board particularly is filtered to only show episodes. So these are um, kind of the main bulk part of running a podcast. And then they're sorted by various topics, which of course you can edit and change to meet your own podcast needs. We also have a section for any related social media content. So maybe you're going to tweet about an episode or maybe you'll have an Instagram post related to each episode. You can also sort and store those here and the calendar will list any of the content pieces that have a due date assigned to them. We also have kind of a section that's dedicated just to brainstorming content ideas. You can also use keywords as a way to kind of um, increase that brainstorming effort, uh, but you can list any uh, content ideas across different types. So episodes, tweets, Instagram, posts, articles, uh, you can list those here. And then we have a section for any artwork or design assets that also go along with your episode 
creation. Final section of the actions um, tab is guests. So any upcoming guest meetings and interviews will be listed here. We have our pipeline, which is now filtered to show only guests. So we have the status of our guests. As we reach out to people, we can move them along through our guests pipeline until eventually they are confirmed as a guest on the, on the podcast. Finally, we have a questions list. So you can list any common questions that you like to ask, or if you come across a podcaster that you respect and you hear a question which you think could go well on your podcast, you can obviously list those here. You can tag them based on um, whatever categories you like. And then if you have any questions that you think might be particularly relevant to a guest, you can also link them and relate them with this guest tab here. So that covers our actions section. Now the, the kind of third piece. So we have our planning, we have our actions, and then we have kind of review and performance. So we have a section to kind of cover the main KPIs that are going on in our business, which are broken down into some different business areas. So maybe for marketing, we have some specific metrics that we want to track for content, for financials, for product. We can list those here. And then we have a couple of dashboards which may or may not be relevant. So if you have, um, let's say you are using a specific um, directory or publishing podcast publishing podcast publishing platform like Spotify, and they have their own dashboard, you might be able to just embed that in here as a substitute. Um, but by default, you'll just see a YouTube analytics and a Google analytics for your website to track any metrics that we have. Um, related to your to your podcast then we have a financials side of the um, podcasting business so any invoices if you are invoicing your sponsors you can track that here total revenue items and expenses can be listed here as well you can use this just for um, your business expenses or you can also use it uh, to track all your personal expenses if you're just running this podcast business by yourself. There's also a bit of a cash flow, quick cash flow calculator and chart here, and then a runway if that's something that you uh, is relevant for how you're running your business. Team, if you are, uh, let's say, hiring a video editor or someone to help with social media, you can list that here. Equipment, you can keep track of your equipment and gear with this simple table. Contracts and docs, tools, archives, these are also kind of some more general pages to help you um, track, you know, inventory and things that are going on and tools that you're using in the business. So I've gone a little bit over 15 minutes, but I think we've covered all the main areas. And now if you do have any questions about how you might actually implement this or use this system, uh, again, whether you are already podcasting and you'd like to translate or transfer the systems you're using into this Notion setup, or if you're thinking of getting started and you have some questions, do leave me a comment. More than happy to help walk through any questions. So I think that about covers the main points of this Podcaster OS setup. If you'd like to use this system, you can purchase it with the link in the YouTube description. And if you have any questions about how to get it set up or how you might go about recreating it for yourself, please don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'm more than happy to help. So hope you found this useful and we'll see you in the next video.